Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Ruddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Dubus Giraffes and Dubus Niger. Dubus Niger is located in the northeast part of Niger. It's about halfway between the towns of Agadez and Arlet, where the Teneri Desert and Eyre Mountains meets. It is part of the Trans-Saharan Caravan trade route. This route has been used by the Tareg for over 2,000 years. Archaeological evidence shows the area has been occupied for 8,000 years. The giraffes can be found just a few miles west of the road. They are an example of a petroglyph. Petroglyphs are rock carvings made by incising, picking, carving, or abrading. The oldest petroglyphs known are the Bimbetka petroglyphs and Daraki Chatan petroglyphs in India. They were created between 700,000 and 290,000 BCE, the Acheulean period of the Paleolithic era. The Dubus giraffes aren't that old, but they do have their own claim to fame. The Dubus giraffes are the largest known animal petroglyphs in the world. They were first recorded by French archaeologist Christian Dupuy in 1987. Ten years later, they were documented by David Colson. Dupuy described two life-size engravings of giraffes in the rock. It's believed the engravings depict a male and female giraffe. The larger of the two engravings stands 18 feet or 5.4 meters tall, if measured from the tip of the ears to the hind legs. The petroglyphs are incredibly detailed and were formed using several different engraving techniques, including scraping, smoothing, and deep engraving of the outlines. There are low relief carvings of dots all over the bodies of the giraffes. Strangely, each giraffe has a line leading from its mouth or nose to a small human figure standing below. This isn't unusual in Saharan rock art, but its meaning remains unknown. Some people have some theories about what the carving could mean. Some believe that the line indicates that giraffes were either hunted or domesticated. Others believe it may have some sort of spiritual, mythical, or cultural meaning. Still others believe that the lines and humans were not contemporary to the engravings. They believe that the humans and lines were added later. The Dubus giraffes command a lot of interest because of their details and enormous size. The carvings themselves date back to between 6,000 and 8,000 years ago, having been carved during the Neolithic subfluvial period. The area was likely much wetter during this time period than it is today. During the Neolithic subfluvial era, the Sahara was a vast savanna, which is a grassy plain in a subtropical area. It's believed the environmental conditions were prime for supporting large animals like giraffes. The giraffes were likely carved into the sandstone using tools made of harder materials like flint. Archaeologists have found chisels made of petrified wood in the area surrounding the giraffes. If the carvings are so old, how did they go undiscovered for so long? The giraffes were carved high up into a sandstone outcrop. They are not visible from the ground. In order to see them, you must climb a boulder. Interestingly, the giraffes are not the only petroglyphs in the area. They're just the most often discussed because of their huge size. In fact, there are 828 other engravings here. 704 of those engravings are of animals. The vast majority, 46% to be exact, are buffalo. Ostrich, antelope or gazelles, and giraffes each make up 16% of the carvings. There are also 12 camels, 11 dog-like animals, six rhinoceros, three horses or donkeys, two monkeys, two elephants, and one lion engraving. 61 of the remaining carvings are of humans. There are 17 inscriptions written in Tifanagh, or the script used by the Tarag engraved into the stone. The remaining engravings aren't so easily identified and are open to interpretation. In 2001, another archaeological site was found that provided some more information about the people that may have carved the Dubus giraffes. 
Gobero sits at the western edge of the Teneri Desert, approximately 150 kilometers southeast of the Ar Mountains. Gobero dates back to the early Holocene period, which was approximately 6200 to 7700 years ago. It's the earliest recorded cemetery in the Western Sahara Desert. At Gobero, archaeologists discovered around 200 burials. The skeletons found buried here are from very tall people, nearly two meters tall. The people buried here were wearing jewelry. A young girl was found with a hippopotamus tusk bracelet, and a man was found with the shell of a turtle. Studies of the skeletons revealed that people led largely sedentary lives and that the economy was based on fishing and hunting. The site also revealed that there was an occupational hiatus when people did not live in the area before other groups moved in. Because of this occupational hiatus, scientists cannot be sure that the people found at Gobero were the same that carved the giraffes. Sadly, in the years since the giraffes were carved, they have deteriorated significantly. The weather has taken its toll, but it's not the only thing destroying the carvings. Human intervention is also destroying them. Some people have taken pieces of the carvings, while others have stepped on portions of them. In an attempt to preserve the giraffes and other engravings, the carvings were cast in molds. The first casting was done in aluminum and currently sits on display at the airport of Agadez. In the year 2000, the engravings were declared one of the 100 most endangered sites by the World Monument Watch. Today, a small group of Tarag watch over and protect the engraving from further harm. Who carved the Debus giraffes? What do they mean? What do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ready Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ready Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.